Tough times don't last forever. There is no doubt that we are all tired of the sorrows, pains, and deadness pervading the land. I have good news for you. Christ has come to guarantee true change this April at the Deeper Life National Easter Retreat. It's your time to experience Christ's resurrection power. From Thursday 6th to Monday 10th, April 2023, Join the nearest Deeper Life Retreat location around the globe. Christ's power will be unveiled by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui and other anointed men of God. Everyone is welcome. The retreat time is a time of waiting before the Lord. I want to plead with you. Be present in every session. The Lord will fill your cup to overflowing. Come um, and taste of Christ's resurrection power. It's real. Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ happening live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name for this Bible study. We're asking that today you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. And we pray that the Spirit of God would apply all these words specifically and in a dynamic way to every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Bless us mightily today, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're studying Proverbs chapter 8 and chapter 9. I read from Proverbs chapter 8 verse 1. Does not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top high places by the way of in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. In the book of Proverbs we've been studying, Concerning wisdom, no doubt as we have gone from chapter to chapter, you have seen that the word of God as revealed in the book of Proverbs is to give us wisdom, or in other words, to make us wise. And therefore, all through the chapter, all through the chapters, God has been calling upon us that we ought to receive wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. So from the very beginning, as we look at the opening verses of the book, you see that the intention of God is that God, through the book, will grant us an abundance of godly wisdom so that we'll be able to lead our lives in wisdom, equity, 
and righteousness. In chapter 2, verse 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Here we are told that knowledge and wisdom go together, that is, that they are companions, and that if we are going to live successful lives, it is necessary for us that we will have knowledge on the one hand, we will have wisdom, the ability to apply the knowledge, so that our lives will be what the life ought to be. Chapter 3, verse 19. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding has established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. Again, wisdom and knowledge are shown as companions. Not only companions, in the hands of man, in the heart of man, or in the life, and activities of men and women on the face of the earth, that God himself used knowledge. As you look at all the things around you that God has made, you'll know that a lot of knowledge and wisdom went into play before all these things can be done. And yet we're told that in our own lives, without having this wisdom, there is not much we can do. In chapter 4, verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Then it says, you must exalt her, and then she'll promote you. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give unto thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver thee. So again here we are told that wisdom is essential. Very, very important. And if you have not exalted her, if you have not promoted her, embraced her, let wisdom come on your priority list as a principal thing, as a major thing, the number one thing you must have in your life. And that if you have this wisdom, it will prolong your life. It will grant you promotion also. Then in chapter 5, verse 1, My son, attend unto my wisdom. Bow down thine ear unto my understanding, that thou mayest re regard discretion, that thy lips may keep knowledge. So you can see that over and over, the word of God, as we have been learning in the book of Proverbs, has been exhorting us, teaching and instructing us that wisdom is very, very important. In chapter 6, reading verse 6, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. On the one hand, the writer has gone to an extreme. He has gone to the extreme of the divine. He's gone to the highest heavens. And he has said, God possessed wisdom. And he used wisdom in the creative things that he did. Now, he has come to the other extreme. He has come to the lowest earth. And has gone into the very earth and the dust. And he has said, do you see those sands that cannot fly, that cannot go into the air? And at the very lowest earth, Go to them if you are still not getting the message of the book of Proverbs and be wise. It's telling us in so many words and in so many ways, saying that wisdom is very, very important. Chapter 7, verse 4. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, call understanding thy king's woman. That is, be very close to wisdom and let wisdom be so close to you. Your right handed sister in fellowship with you, in love with you. Already has told you, embrace wisdom, seek wisdom, get wisdom. Get it as a principal thing. Let it not leave you, and you don't leave it. And then it says, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy king's woman, that, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, and from the stranger that flattereth with her lips. In all the chapters we have read in the book of Proverbs, from chapter 1 through chapter 7, you have seen the mention over and over of wisdom. But now, the chapter 8 we have come to is very different. Very different. Here, wisdom is personified. Wisdom addresses us like a man. Wisdom has a voice and it calls out to us. Wisdom here acts like a person that says, they have been talking about me. And you have been thinking, if I could come and talk to you myself. And here wisdom appears and it says, 
in verse 8, in chapter 1, verse 8, does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth like a man in the top of the high places. By the way, in the places of the paths, she cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. He says, they've been talking about me, telling you, seek wisdom, get wisdom, embrace wisdom, love wisdom, make wisdom your companion. But now he says, I'm calling unto you. My voice is to the sons of man. If you are still simple or ignorant, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. I want to address this issue that the Bible speaks so clearly about on the personification of wisdom. That is, you take a virtue and you personify that virtue. Instead of looking, that, looking at that virtue as just character, as just something that has moral value, you make that character or that virtue wear the garb of man, speak with the voice of man. In which case we say that wisdom or that virtue is personified. Look with me to First John chapter 1, verse 6, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Here the word of God is saying that God is so much full of truth, and righteousness, and holiness, and light, that you can say that God himself is light. And isn't that what Jesus Christ himself said when he said, I am the light of the world. Not just that I came to show you light or reveal light unto you and give you knowledge. I am light personified. And then he turned to his own disciple and he said, not only that God is light, not only that I, Christ, your Savior, your Redeemer, I am light, ye are the light of the world. Now you are like the light or like the lamp set up the candle set up upon a pole, upon a place. And therefore you must show forth the light, light personified. In First John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here again we are told of the characteristic of the nature of God, that God is love. Not only that he has love, he lives in love, he acts in love, he relates with us in love, but the fact is that he's so full of love and there's no hatred or bitterness within him, nothing negative, nothing injurious within him, that the total personality of God is called love. In that same way, wisdom is personified in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Light personified, God is light. Love personified, God is love. Wisdom personified, that Christ himself is the wisdom of God. But then remember that we as the children of God and we as the followers of Christ, you know what Jesus said? He said, as I have done, so should you do. As I have lived, so should you live. And then we're told in 1 John chapter 4 and in verse 17. 1 John chapter 4 verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Is Christ light? So are we. Is he love? So should we be. Is Christ the wisdom of God? So are we. That we also should so operate in the wisdom of God. Love the wisdom of God. Have the wisdom of God so much that we will be called, as we are called light, we should also be called wisdom. Because Christ our Savior, Christ our Redeemer, Christ the one we are following, Christ that indwells in us is the wisdom of God. And so too should we be wisdom personified.
Let's come back to Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 1. Does not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice? Here we're told that wisdom has a voice. And if you go to the very extreme of the meaning and the, and the portrait of wisdom, you'll know that this is ultimately referring to Christ, that Christ uttered his voice. Where did he utter his voice? Look at verse 2. He standeth in the top of the high places. And so did he stand on the mountain side, in the high places. And the people congregated before him, and he preached the sermon on the mount. Not only that, by the way, in the places of the past, didn't you know that on the streets of Jerusalem, in Capernaum, in Jericho, he preached the word, the word of God. What was he giving out? The wisdom of God. They never heard it like this before. They never saw it like this before. Wisdom come from above. The wisdom of God descended in the midst of men. And the wisdom of God not standing only in the synagogue, only in the temple, not just in a private place, but on the mountainside, in the top of the high places. And by the way, in the places of the past, she cries at the gates, at the gate of Jericho. So did he call unto men. And he brought them the wisdom from above. And at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the door, many times Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, will stay in a house. And then the people will congregate, they'll come, and he'll fill up the house until there is no room, not even at the door. And he will speak unto men, unto you, O men, I call. And he called unto the adults and the young, unto the men and the women, unto the sophisticated like Nicodemus, as well as to the illiterates like Peter's mother-in-law. And spoke to everyone, saying, Unto you I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. What was he saying? Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In fact, the testimony of the people is that he preached everywhere. He spoke the word to them, not only in a secluded place, but in the open, in the street. Let's look at Luke chapter 13, verse 26. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. The wisdom of God in Christ cried aloud, called out to men and women on the streets. In fact, in any place and every place where we could find people. But then he sent his own disciples out. He told the parable in Luke chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And you know, Jesus always applied wisdom. Here is why we call Jesus and why the Bible calls Jesus the wisdom of God. Because he spoke and made use of the things around him in parables so that he can teach the people the way of God. That takes wisdom. He was eating this place and there was one of the people that sat at meat and said, Blessed is he that will eat bread in the kingdom of God. It will take wisdom to point the attention of this person that said this to God, to holiness, to Christian duty, or to Christian living. And all that wisdom resided in Christ. Jesus Christ was so full of wisdom that he is referred to as the wisdom of God. Then he said unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper to time to say to them that were bidding, Come, all things are now ready. Before I read further in Luke chapter 14, I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 9. Verse 1. Wisdom has builded her house. She has hewed out her seven pillars. The seven pillars there stand for completeness. All things are now ready. Everything is finished. All that men will need so that they can be in fellowship with Almighty God. Christ, the wisdom of God, has finalized everything. He said it is finished. She has killed her beasts. She has mingled her wine. She has furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens. 
she cries upon the high places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread, drink of the wine which I have mingled. Here is exactly what Jesus Christ was given in a form of parable. He related everything to the kingdom of God. Can you read the book of Proverbs and just read ordinarily? As if it is not coming from the mind of God. As if it has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. As if it has nothing to do with the call of Christ. Now come to Luke chapter 14. Verse 16. Then said he unto him, A certain man made is a great supper, and bid many, and sent his servants at supper time, to say unto them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. They first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. Verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord this thing. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Here the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, The Lord of the kingdom, the king in the kingdom, will be sending out his servants, and he will be telling them, to go out and convince and compel and plead with the people in the highways and the edges that they should come in. Here is what I'm saying. That Christ is the wisdom of God. But then, he's calling upon us who are the children of God. That with wisdom, we should go out. If you are indwelt by Christ, you are indwelt by wisdom. Just as Jesus said, I am the light, then he turned to his disciples and said, Ye are the light. Then he is the wisdom of God. He is turning to us and he is saying, You are the word of God, that's wisdom. You are indwelt by Christ, that's wisdom. To the point now that you should be able to identify with wisdom. Come back to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Does not wisdom cry? How will wisdom cry? Can wisdom cry without the voice of man? Can wisdom cry? Try, uh, stand aloof as an ideology, as an entity, as just a virtue. Can that wisdom, without dwelling in man, cry out? You know what the Bible is saying? The Bible is saying that those who have been filled with the wisdom of God, they are crying out. And so wisdom is crying out. Those who have understanding in the things of the Lord, they utter their voices. And so we say, understanding is uttering her voice. She standeth in the top of the high places. So if you have the wisdom of God, if you are the child of God, and you have Christ, the wisdom of God indwelling you, so are you expected to stand in the top of the high places. You are to also stand by the ways in the places of the paths. What are you to do? Verse 3, you are to cry out at the gates. At the gates of the city. At the entry of the city. Where is that? That's the motor park. The motor park is the gate of the city where people come in or where people get out of the city. The airport is the gate of the city where people who are coming from other countries will enter through that airport and get into the country. And so you that have the wisdom of God, you that have Christ indwelling you and the wisdom of God indwelling you, cry out, speak out at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. We should knock on the doors of people and offer them and give them the wisdom of God. The word of God that is able to make them wise unto salvation. Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. Which means that we should reach all categories of people. All the sons of man. All those who are born of men. We should call unto them. The young, the old, the educated, the illiterate. The civilized, the unenlightened, the primitive, everyone. And say, O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. And we shall be telling them to hear the word of God. For I will speak excellent things. 
and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Let's go back to chapter 1 of Proverbs, verse 20. Wisdom cries without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. I must ask you again. How will wisdom cry without? If you look at a neighborhood today, every time you read the newspapers, there's wisdom crying out. But that's human wisdom. And all that you read in those papers shall be granting you wisdom. Wisdom to know where to go and where not to go. When there are accidents, the papers will report. And when there are robbers in the night uh, um, going in the highways, the papers will report. And when the prices are going down, the prices are going up, the papers will report. And when things are difficult and you need to know how to find your way in business and you need to find your way in various areas of life, wisdom will cry out without in those papers. That tells you how wisdom cries out. Wisdom is not just going to cry out in the vacuum, but through the papers, or maybe in the radio, or maybe a man or a woman that has some human wisdom. When he stands out there and he cries out, that's wisdom crying without. But you know the highest kind of wisdom is the wisdom that leads you to Christ and leads you to God and leads you to heaven and makes you to walk in the narrow path that leads to everlasting life. And then when you have that word of God, when you call out and cry out and speak out, that's wisdom crying without. She uttereth her voice in the street. How does she do that? When that wisdom has come into you, and you go to the streets and you preach the word of God, then that's wisdom uttering her voice in the streets. She cries in the cheap place of concourse. That is where many people congregate together, like the railway station, like the market. In the cheap place of concourse, in the working places where you have many, many people, in the factory where you have many, many people, at the bus stop where you have many, many people, she cries out in the cheap place of concourse. When you who have the wisdom of God and the word of God, when you're speaking out, that's wisdom speaking out. In the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and ye scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. And so we're learning from all this, that the wisdom in us, the wisdom of God in us, will not allow us to keep quiet. But on the street, in the plain, on the mountaintop, in the market, at the motor parks, at the gates of the city, at the doors of the houses, in the cheap place of concourse, anywhere we can find men, women, or children, the wisdom of God should be speaking out. And we should be telling people, that the Lord is calling them. But then it goes on in chapter 8, verse 6, to the character of wisdom. One is taking wisdom as virtue. And he's saying this is a character of this virtuous sin called wisdom. Two, we need to understand that the highest portrait of wisdom is Christ himself. And so it is saying that this is also the character, not only of the virtue wisdom, but of Christ himself. But you understand that what Christ says, Christians are. So this passage is also telling us the character and the virtue of the Christian who is indwelt by wisdom. Wisdom as virtue, that's one. Christ as the highest portrait of wisdom, that's number two. And the Christian as the person that has wisdom indwelling him, that's number three. Let's look at that passage with that understanding. The virtue, wisdom, verse six. Here, for I will speak excellent things. The opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. That is, when we talk of wisdom, we're not talking of cleverness, subtlety, evil, and the people that have carnality doing evil. It's talking about righteousness and truth. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. When somebody has the virtue wisdom, then there will not be crookedness, there will not be forwardness, but there will be righteousness, and then there will be justice as well. Verse 9, all they are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. It's telling us that wisdom is more important, is greater than riches or wealth. Because if a man has the wealth and he doesn't have wisdom, how will he be able to use that in a ride? For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that thou, that 
may be desired and not to be compared to it. That's another way of reminding us wisdom is the principal sin, is the highest sin, is the greatest sin, is the most important sin. Let it have priority in your life. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. It's saying nobody can make any invention. Nobody can make any discovery without some wisdom and without some knowledge. And so knowledge and wisdom are companions in having inventions that are witty. Inventions that are not commonplace, not superficial. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way. And a forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. Can we counsel without having wisdom? Can we direct other people without having wisdom? And so wisdom is saying, the virtue wisdom is a thing that qualifies us to counsel. And sound wisdom, I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign. Princes decree justice. It says, kings cannot even rule a right without having this quality, this virtue, wisdom. By me the princes rule. And the nobles, even all the judges of the earth, I love them that love me. What does that mean? It says what we read before. That if you'll cry after wisdom, like a baby will cry after the bottle. That if you will dig for wisdom, like a person seeking for his treasure will dig for wisdom. Like if you will plead for wisdom, like a subject will plead before the king for wisdom. That if you will trade for wisdom and make sure that you look for it and exchange it and exchange it with any other thing, sacrifice for it, like a merchant, a trader will look for wisdom. If you will love and desire and seek after wisdom, then you will find. He says, I love them that love me. I make myself available to the people that seek so they can find. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. He's saying that that wisdom can make us prosperous. Can a person be foolish in how to trade, how to work, how to go about his business, and yet be wealthy at the same time? It takes some wisdom, some level of understanding, before we can have riches and honor. And so wisdom says, riches that we are looking for, that, that, rich, that riches and the honor, they are with me. And then the fruit of wisdom is better than gold. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the, in the, midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Ordinarily that talks about virtue. But let me remind you, Christ is the wisdom of God. Ultimately, finally, in the highest sense of it, when you are talking about wisdom, you should be talking about Christ. Go back to verse 6 and let's talk about Christ, the wisdom of God. Here, for I will speak excellent things. The opening of my lips shall be right things. Did you ever say anything wrong? Anything false? When the wisdom of God descended and came in the midst of men, did he not speak of things that are excellent, things that are hidden from the foundation of the world? When he opened his mouth, did not the people say, he spake not as Pharisees and Sadducees, but he taught with authority. For my mouth shall speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, spoke so much truth that at the end of his life he said, I'm the way, I'm the life, I'm the truth. That if you are looking for the truth, I'm the personification of the truth. And then they found that there was no sin, there was no wickedness. He pointed at the people and said, Which of you convinces me of sin? Verse 8. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. I'm the light of the world. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness. They are all plain to him that understandeth, right to them that find knowledge. The disciple one time, they asked Jesus about something, and he answered them. And he said, now we know that you know all things. And nothing can be hidden away from you. His words were plain. And the common people had him gladly receive my instruction, not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. Didn't he say, to seek the kingdom of God 
first, and then all these other things shall be added unto you. Wasn't he saying, the word that makes us wise unto salvation is the important thing, is the greatest thing. And he said that that is where we should put our heart, put our attention. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that thou mayest be, that, that may be desired are not to be compared to it. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world of gold, of silver, of rubies, of riches, of wealth, and you do not have the word of eternal life, the word of salvation, which is the word that Jesus Christ, the wisdom, was preaching? And it says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. And he revealed that to the disciples and said, Oh, Father, I thank you. Because you have hidden these things from the prudent and the wise of the world, and you have revealed them unto base, and even so, it, has, it, has, it is the thing that pleases you. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the proward mouth do I hate. And in all his messages, as the wisdom of God, he showed that he hated everything evil. Even the hypocrisy and the pretense of the Pharisees, he hated everything perfectly. Counsel is mine. What's his name? Counselor. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor. Whenever he opened his mouth and he counseled the people, they knew that he was giving them sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. He doeth all things well. Nothing impossible for him. By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. By his knowledge, by his wisdom, those who want to reign, they must know this king of kings. They must know this lord of lords. Because when you think about it, the people that love the Lord, they are the people that can rule well. They are the people that can lead well. Show me a man who is a king. Show me a man who is a leader among people in society. And he does not learn from Christ. Learn the basic things like the golden rule. Whatsoever you want others to do unto you, do unto them also. Not learn the very basics of the message of the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in heart. They shall see the kingdom of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God himself. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called the children of God. Show me a king, show me a governor, show me a leader among the people that will take the words of Jesus, the words of wisdom, and throw them overboard and say, I don't need that, he cannot rule well. In fact, the laws of every nation, they are based on the words of wisdom that came out of the Lord Jesus Christ. By him, the king's reign, and the princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and the nobles, and even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. He that believeth on me shall have everlasting life. I give him life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And whosoever has been drawn by the Father, he will come. And he that comes to me, I will in no wise reject. Those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. How has the Lord promised us all those things that we're seeking after? He said, take no thought what we shall eat, what ye shall drink, wherewith ye shall be clothed, at all these things the Gentiles seek. But your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. The riches, the honor with him, he will give unto you. The honorable riches and righteousness are with him. My fruit is better than gold. Salvation is better than gold. Don't we sing something better than gold? And that's what we have got. The salvation from the Lord. The fruit that we have received from Christ, the wisdom of God, is better than even fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the path of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. I will fill their treasures. Now you are a child of God. I said, when we become children of God, we are indwelt by wisdom. What's the character of that wisdom? Go back to verse 6. You as a child of God, having with the wisdom of God, shall be crying to people and calling to people around you. With wisdom here, I will speak excellent things. Let your mouth, as a child of God, be controlled by the law of kindness, by the wisdom of God. If you know that what you are going to say is going to come out foolish, 
Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you know that what you are going to say will come out with foolishness, you say no, that will contradict the indwelling wisdom that is living in me. Therefore, open your mouth and say excellent things. Let the opening of your lips be saying right things, so that your mouth shall speak the truth. Tell the truth and say the truth, every man to his neighbor, for ye are members one of another. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. As a child of God, indwelt by Christ, indwelt by the wisdom of God, let wickedness be foreign to you. Let sin be foreign to your lips. Let everything you say be totally void or free of hypocrisy and pretense and sin. All the words of my mouth are righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. As a child of God, indwelt by the wisdom of God, let that be your character. That all the words of your mouth, anytime they check up anything from you, they'll find that everything is righteous, everything is truth, there is no hypocrisy or pretense or lying in what you're saying. Verse 9, they are all plain to him that understandeth. You do not use dark speeches that will be ambiguous, that can have double meaning so you can deceive people. Everything you say will be clear, will be plain, will be simple, and then it will be right to them that find knowledge. Then you'll be able to say, receive my instruction and not silver. My knowledge rather than choice gold. You know what that means? If you are really a house fellowship leader, you are working with the Lord and you are working for God. The teaching that people receive at the house fellowship should be more important to them than silver and gold. When the house fellowship is about to hold, when the time is running on, they should be running and saying, oh, I don't want that sister to start talking before I get there. Wisdom is always coming out. They should be carrying their Bibles and calling their neighbors and say, I do not want that brother, that area leader to finish because, you know, every time that man opens his mouth, in fact, I wonder for him. I wonder how he reads his own Bible. I wonder what fellowship and relationship he has with Christ. Every time he opens his mouth, I receive instruction. If I've been confused during the week, if I've been confused any time, the moment I get to that house fellowship, or the moment I get to that search, the scripture, even before the question time, I can get instruction for my life. I love the knowledge that comes out of that place more than even silver or gold. When you are indwelt by Christ, when you are indwelt by the wisdom of God, for wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that, thou, that mayest be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty invention. The Lord told his own disciples that those who are following after him will bring out things both old and new. And it means there that the old knowledge, you will bring them out with new application. And the things that had not been discovered before, you bring them out from the word of God so that it will be beneficial to you, to people around you. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you are indwelt by the wisdom of God, and you, you know, I read to you before in, in the past week, oh, that they were wise, and they will consider this, and consider their latter end. You are always doing everything in the light of eternity. And if you do everything you do in the light of eternity, you'll hate evil. You'll hate pride. You'll hate arrogancy and evil way. The forward mouth you will hate. Counsel is mine. Who do we run to when we need counseling? Those who have maturity. Those who have godly wisdom. Those who know how to apply the word of God, the knowledge from the word of God, apply it to our lives and just show us in a very simple way, saying this is the way, what ye in it. Those are the people we go to for counseling. But the people that remain in the Lord and remain in the church many, many years and they do not have the wisdom of God, they do not have the word of God. When you need counseling, do we run to them? No, we don't run to them. He confused me last year. He almost made me to backslide last month. If I followed what he told me three months ago, I would not have remained a Christian now. I am not going to get to that man anymore. I spoke to that lady some time ago, and you know what he told me to do? Made me to lose my pregnancy. I am not going to see counseling from that woman anymore. I told that person sometimes that I had a problem like this in my place of work. You know what he told me? When I carried it out, they almost terminated my appointment. Are we going to run to those people that do not have the wisdom of God when we're looking for counseling? Oh no. But the people, I got into trouble last year and I sought brother so-and-so. And the wisdom he gave me, 
that's, that has helped me till today. I saw that sister just last month, and I was having a problem with my husband. I was having a problem in my family. And what that sister gave me, the wisdom of God, I'm enjoying my family now. Those are the people we run to in counseling. Look at it in verse 14. Counsel is mine. It belongs to godly wisdom and maturity. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign. You have, do you know kings that are wise, wise-hearted? They will keep the nation. There may be poverty, but if there is wisdom in leadership, the people will not be scattered. The people will not be rebellious if there is wisdom. I mean, there's still wisdom, pure wisdom, godly wisdom. That has no deceit, that has no hatred, that has no partiality, that has no hypocrisy. Kings reign by wisdom, and princes decree justice. And by me, princes rule, and nobles, even all judges of the earth, I love them that love me. And seek those that seek me early shall find me. Riches, honor, I with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love wisdom, that love me, to inherit substance. And I will feel their treasure. I've been showing you that these things show, one, Christ, and then two, the children of God, followers of Christ. In John chapter 7, I'm looking at verse 45 and verse 46. Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? They sent these officers out to take the Lord Jesus Christ, so that they shall arrest him, bind him, maybe kill him at that time. But when those officers or soldiers got to the place where Jesus was talking, they opened their mouths, they opened their eyes, they opened their hearts, they opened everything openable in their body and in their lives. They were listening to Jesus Christ. He wasn't talking like a Pharisee. He wasn't talking like a Sadducee. He wasn't talking like a member of the Sanhedrin. He wasn't talking like a judge of the earth. He was talking as a person that descended from heaven. They forgot that they were sent to arrest Jesus Christ. When he closed the meeting, they prayed and they went back to the people that sent them. And they said, where is the person who told you to arrest? Have you not brought him? Then the officers answered and said, never man speak like this man. That's not what we sent you for years, we know. But we couldn't resist his wisdom. We couldn't even lift up our hands to arrest that man. It's the wisdom of God. That's what we're learning. The character of wisdom. It will disarm your enemy. It will make the foes to become friends. It will make people that would have rejected the message to accept the message. But it's not only that Christ is the wisdom of God. He wants us to also manifest that wisdom. In Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom that all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. You see, we should have wisdom. One, we should have the normal wisdom, the natural wisdom that people acquire by just reading, by just learning, by just observing everything around them. Number two, we should have the wisdom of God revealed in the word of God. Number three, we should receive the fullness of Christ in dwelling wisdom. Christ, the wisdom of God, dwelling within us. And he says, I will give you a mouth and I will give you wisdom that all your adversaries, all your enemies put together shall not be able to gainsay or resist. First Peter, chapter 3, and verse 15. But sanctify the Lord, honor the Lord, reverence the Lord God in your heart, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Operate in wisdom, the wisdom of God. In Colossians, Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. How will you know you are walking in wisdom? Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. How ye ought to answer every question. 
how ye ought to answer every objection to the way of life, to the way of Christ that God has given unto you. So we learn that the message of wisdom is characterized by truth and righteousness. There is nothing twisted, nothing crooked in the preacher's words who is indwelt by wisdom. A message, therefore, as we are indwelt by wisdom, must be only truth, nothing else but truth, righteousness, right things and excellent things, without anything perverse, anything false. It should also be plain, simple to understand, profitable above all else, above gold, silver, wealth, riches, honor, above rubies. And accepting that message should bring righteousness and prosperity because it's a message that will be profitable to kings, to princes, to nobles, and to all others. If God has given us wisdom and he asks if we are saved, our message must reach out to kings, to princes, to nobles, and to many other people. Let's now look at Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Remember, it's wisdom talking. And remember, wisdom as virtue. Just like love is virtuous. Just like righteousness is a virtue. Just like power is a character of God. Look at it this way. The Lord possessed wisdom in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. Look at it this way. The Lord possessed power in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. Look at this again. The Lord possessed love in the beginning of his way before his works of old. What am I saying? There is no time that God did not have power. Can you think of God at any time? He existed, but then he didn't have power? No, he had always had power. From all eternity, the Lord possessed power in the beginning. Can you think of a time when God did not possess love? And you say, here is God. But at that time, he had no love at all. No, there is nothing like that. The Lord possessed love in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Can you think of any time when God did not have holiness and righteousness? And you'll say, look at God. There was a time he didn't have holiness. He didn't have righteousness. There's nothing like that. The Lord possessed righteousness and holiness in the beginning of his way before his works of old. The same about wisdom. There was no time when God did not have wisdom. He had always had wisdom. Read that. Read this passage with that understanding. The Lord possessed wisdom in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I, wisdom, was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. It's saying, the earth would, would not have been created were it not for the wisdom of God, which he had from the dateless past, from eternity, from everlasting. When there were no deaths, I, wisdom, was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I, wisdom, was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I, wisdom, was there. And so could power say, I, power, was there. And so could love say, I, love, was there. That is, love personified. And then he says, when he set a compass upon the face of the dead, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the seas decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the fountains of the earth, then I, wisdom, was by him. As one brought up with him, I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. He was saying, God always possessed wisdom, just like he always possessed love, just like he always possessed power, just like he always had righteousness and holiness. Rejoice in the habitable part of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of men. But it's more than that. I told you before, I read it to you. Let's read it again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're looking at verse 24. 
but unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God. Christ, the wisdom of God. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now talking about Christ, he was the wisdom of God. You remember? God gave Solomon wisdom. And in the whole of the Old Testament, there was nobody like Solomon in wisdom. And yet when Jesus came, he said, A greater than Solomon is here. The wisdom of God personified. Come back to Proverbs chapter 8. And read that with this understanding. The Lord possessed me, the wisdom of God Christ, in the beginning of his way. Before the works of old, no wonder he said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was light, and the light was the life of men. There was nothing made that was made except by him. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old, I, Christ, was set up from everlasting. From the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, Christ was there. When there were no fountains abounding or the waters, Christ had always been there. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. Father, glorify thou me, or the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. Christ had always been there. The wisdom of God, when he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he stretched the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the fountains of the earth, then I, wisdom, the wisdom of God, Christ was by him, as one brought up with him. Always that he had been existed, had been existing, had always been existing. In fact, I was daily his delight, rejoicing always, before him. Thou art, thou art not little, O Bethlehem, of all the cities of Judah, because out of you shall be he that has the scepter, and his goings forth had been from everlasting. That's talking about Christ. Micah chapter 5. I'm reading verse 2. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet art out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So before all these things were made, Christ had been there. Christ, the wisdom of God. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 31. Rejoicing in the habitable, in the habitable part of, the, uh, of his earth, and my delights, were for the sons of men. You remember? Abraham rejoiced to see my days. He saw it and he was glad. And then the people said, Thou art not yet fifty years of age yet. Have you seen Abraham? Before Abraham was, I am. And so Jesus Christ, the Lord, the wisdom of God, he took part in that creation. And this section that we have read points to that significant passage of the New Testament that I have read to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, and a passage in Colossians as well. Wisdom had existed before God created the world. In fact, it was active in the creative process. Now, the climactic appeal of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. Refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gate. 
waiting at the posts of my door. But whosoever findeth, for whosoever findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. He that sinneth against me, wrongeth his own soul. All that hate me, love death. This is talking about wisdom. If we hate wisdom, then we love death. But ultimately, it's talking about the wisdom of God, talking about Christ. If we hate Christ, if we hate the living word of God, the logos of God, if we hate Christ who has been sent to redeem us from all iniquity, then it means we love death, we love eternal death. In John chapter 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son have everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. But here, the wisdom of God is appealing to us. It's saying, take this way. Because blessed are they that take my instruction. Blessed are they that are watching at my gate. Blessed are they that are waiting at the posts of my door. Those who find me, they find life eternal. And they will obtain favor from the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 9, wisdom personified is still making an appeal. From verse 3. She, she has sent forth her maidens. She cries upon the high places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in thither. As for him that wanteth understanding, uh, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread, drink of the wine which I have mingled. Remember the words of Jesus? Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you this bread from heaven. I am the bread of life. He that will eat will not hunger anymore. He looked at that woman by the well and said, Give me water to drink. And the woman said, How can you, being a Jew, ask water of me? Don't you know that the Samaritans don't have anything to do with the Jews? And Jesus said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying, Give me water to drink, you would have given him, and he would have given you water to drink, and you will thirst no more. And she said, Lord, give me this water to drink, that I may not thirst again, that I do not come here to draw water anymore. And on the last day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, If any man is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. Because, as the scripture has said, he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow out rivers of living water. Is presenting to us the water of life and the bread of life. He said the kingdom of God is like a nobleman that made a feast. And he sent out the servants and said, call them to come in. Go to the highways. Go to the hedges. And compel them to come in that my house may be filled. And here we are told that wisdom has sent forth her maidens. She cries in the high places of the city, come. The Lord is calling, we shall come. And the children of God too, they are heralding the message and we are telling the people, come. This is like the call of the prophet in Isaiah chapter 55. Verse 1. O everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. He that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. How do you buy something without money? This is talking about something spiritual. You buy this one by repentance, not with money. You buy this one by faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You buy what we're talking about here by surrender and yieldedness unto the Lord. It says, come ye, buy and eat. Ye, come, buy wine. You know, it's not talking about the other wine you're thinking about. The wine you are thinking about, you buy that with money. It's talking about another type of wine. The new wine in the new bottles. The new wine that gives eternal joy. The new wine that makes you forget about the things of this world. The new wine that makes you intoxicated and excited and happy and exuberant about the things of life eternal. The type of wine you are thinking about, they buy that with money. But this one you buy it with repentance, you buy it with faith, you buy it with surrender, you buy it by yielding unto the Lord. It says, come, buy wine and milk without money. And without price, the price had been paid on the cross of Calvary. And he said, it is finished. Whosoever will may now come. Wherefore do you spend your money? For that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not. 
hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that, it, that which is good. And your soul delight, let your soul delight itself in fatness, incline your ear. Come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Matthew 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the wisdom of God calling us. Saying, all things are ready. All things are set. The feast is already set upon the table. Now you can come with repentance and faith and get all that is necessary. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit of God, the wisdom of God is calling. And the bride, the children of God... Those who have the spirit of God and the wisdom of God in, in them, they are saying, come. Let him that heareth say, come. Let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Let's come back to Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom is calling. But on the other hand, folly is also calling. And in this last passage, last section, we're given contrast.